Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. The lady with the mostest, it's Maria Mongrain joining us here today. She is spectacular, working worldwide girl, helping so many people, health, wealth, and well-being, and just so many different ways. Uh, she's not just a coach, she's a friend, she's a mom, she's just uh, a wife, she's everything, and we're excited to have her here because she really has a unique insight on life and the law of attraction. Marie, I'll let you speak and say hello. Thank you so much for having me again. And you know, we'll be here. I'll be here for a while, apparently. <laughs> Yay! Good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I apologize for my voice today. This week it's a little on and off. So, but it's not on and off. It's just it's my sexy voice. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> so I'm Mary F. Mongrain. I'm a life coach. I uh, right now I'm located on the south shore of Montreal in Quebec, Canada, mm. and I'm looking. Uh, to anyone who wants to work with me, uh, I'm sharing now my knowledge with you guys, my insight, because I believe that to work with someone, you got to, you know, have an insight, like you got to give some skin to get some skin back, right? <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are excited to have you here. And uh, what do you want to talk about for today? First of all, I will do say that my website, which is still down, but it's going to be up on Friday, should be ready on Friday. And I'm uh... super excited. I saw like, I'm working with GoDaddy because I'm someone who, who's ultra independent and I do everything by myself. And then a few weeks ago, I said, no more. I will hire someone to do that. And I'm so glad because they sent me like the, the pre like, oh, here, look at your website. We're going to do some modification. And I look at it. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like the whole time. <laughs> the like, oh, my God. It's so amazing. I would not have done that. So I'm super happy. And that, so maryfmongray.com on Friday afternoon, everything will be uh, perfect. And you can go and look at it if you want. Until then, you can find me on Instagram at marymongray90 or even TikTok, which I'm, I spend a lot of time there. I'm always on TikTok. So if you're looking for me, look for TikTok. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, great. Well, it's exciting to have you. I haven't seen you on TikTok yet, uh, but let's explain. I mean, you've done so much for so many people. I know your life story. We all know, you know, a lot about you. What in particular today do you have for us? I see your notes there. Yes, <laughs> my pages. Christmas. Look, I'm going to show you. So you guys who are listening, you can't see, but I decorated for Christmas. You know, last week I talked with was getting stuff out. And I was in alignment and now I'm all decked up for Christmas. Uh -huh. wanna see my tree? You want to see my tree? Yes. It's not, you it's not fully done yet, but I still have my, my precious ornaments that need to be. Uh, that is beautiful. Those pinks and purples and blues. Yeah. And oh, that is gorgeous. This is really beautiful. Wow. And raspberry sugar cane, not the peppermint, the raspberry one. <laughs> Or cherry. <laughs> well, that sure puts you in the spirit, doesn't it? There's something about the holidays that gets us going. Some people, though, go the other way and get depressed. Yes. For me, actually, it actually helps me. And even like, I'm going to show you my, my dining room, obviously. Like, it's all. Oh, it's beautiful. And I love your cat. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Sissy. <laughs> Sissy. Oh, that's my sister. I call her Sissy Sis, but okay. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, for me, like, even this year, it's weird because usually I like to decorate early, not because, like, not because it's like, oh, I want to get Christmas, but the time it takes me and the energy it takes me to get everything out of my garage. Like I have to move stuff out, like the Halloween stuff. I don't put the Halloween stuff back because it, it hides like for the one week, like leaving my garage in disorder, taking like the tree. I'm the one bringing each pieces out from the garage. Like it's a pain. I'm like, I'm not doing that for one week. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not going to do all of this for one month so <laughs> for me even though now we don't have snow in my when i was younger snow was around halloween but now like we have it's green grass i'm like yeah this stuff is going out and i don't care because it it brings all the joy like for me it's the holidays it's a season and you know that you have the school starting in september and then october is halloween and then what november okay yeah remembrance day and all of that usually hear people start the, like they like to start decorating after remembrance day and then i know you guys it's thanksgiving but I say, you know what? No, but I'm the only one judging myself, right? If people judge me for putting my, my Christmas decoration that early, well, I don't care because it brings me joy. It brings light. And then we, um, we dream about what we're going to do for Christmas. Because right now, like, it's always just me and my girls. It's been that way for a, a few years. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what's different about Christmas? Well, 
my house looks awesome. I yep, love the decoration, too. the music. I, I love it. Like, why would I stop myself from having it? Right. So this is permission for everyone who wants to put their Christmas decoration out. <laughs> right. Somebody on TikTok. Oh, so I am live on TikTok as well. Right. Like, I'm not like, I'm going to bring some more collective here. But he just said, yeah, uh, do what makes you happy. Right. And I'm so in for that. And I don't judge people for doing what makes them happy. And this, yeah. I'm like, I, this is I'm living one of my dream life like the you know like what you see in movies you know the the family gatherings and stuff but I'm the mom who's gonna bring all the family gatherings so I, I'm enjoying putting my house super pretty <laughs> well it looks beautiful and it gets you in that spirit it makes you feel so good I you know I took down my Halloween decorations and I'm gonna start doing the house eventually when I get the time but I did bring out some Christmas decorations from the attic I threw them in the garage so Eventually when it's, you know, it's, it's a nice week, but I don't have time to put them outside. So I can't wait. <laughs> exactly. But that's when you do it in alignment, right? You don't yeah. like, want to do it. Like, I'm like, I could have done it last week, right after all. I'm like, you know what? I don't feel, I don't want to make it a chore because even no. I did run all the boxes out and then I'm like, girls, I'm going for a nap. Like we took a two, three hour nap and they were on their tablet. I'm like, yeah. I am done. I don't want to force myself into doing this because then it's just going to be a chore. I want the process of decorating for me is so nice. It like, it makes me feel calm. So I didn't yeah. want, I got the box that's out and it three hours ago, I'm like, okay, now I'm ready. Let, let's do it. Yeah. And I still haven't finished like decorating it. So I'm like, I don't care. The box are still there with the ornaments. I'll do it when it's going to be fun to do because the whole thing is not to put pressure on me to, I don't, it's not the goal to be the perfect mom. It's to actually have fun doing memories. And that brings me into the subject of, you know, grieving and people who are, who have gone through grief and who are going to lose people because obviously, you know, the world turns, people die anyway, and it doesn't matter, we can't stop it. But what I did before my husband passed away, because he passed away in June. Uh, and wow. I, what I did, I was so afraid, like, because also one of his fear was like, I'm afraid my kids won't know I love them. And I know I'm not that good at, you know, keeping like, talking about him all the time but I bring like the subject once in a while like just oh the, you're eating tomatoes your dad didn't like tomatoes and like I, I will bring the subject up and here and there but for a while I was judging myself on I, I'm not doing enough of remembering him right but I'm like okay I gotta take care of myself first yeah what I did though before he passed away I did all the memories I could think right we did like so many like recordings audio recordings um but for Christmas stuff and I'm gonna show them to you because I'm like yeah one of them. And that's something even you can do with just yourself. You don't need to uh, wait for someone to die for that. And that one thing that I can say is I did so many memories with my husband before he passed away that after oh. I was traumatized that all the souvenirs and memories I was making with my kids that I was dying. I'm like, mm. am I doing this? Like all the TikTok videos showing my story. I'm like, am I dying? Mm -hmm. Like a part of me still like was afraid that I was the one dying because I was doing memories that I would have done with my husband or I would do if I was to die right oh writing this this letter I'm like mm -hmm. this fear so that I know that that's trauma and it's it's pretty it's super normal <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> you're living the trauma you think you're gonna die all the time oh pain oh, I'm gonna die am I so for me actually having fun and enjoying things was very fearful because I did fun things with my husband before he passed away to make sure we could do as much as we could so one thing that actually I did, and it's lovely. Now I changed it under my tree, but it's our scree our tree skirt. Mm -hmm. So what we did is a tree skirt. You make that? Is that oh, the kids' handprints? I didn't, make it. I didn't <gasps> make it, but like the pain. Like, so oh before my I, God. I, that was the last thing on my list. And he was super stressed when we did it because like, all right, come on, just put your hand. And I was the one holding his hand because he was like by the end of his life. And he's like, I don't want to do it. Cause I, let me take the time because I know this is super special for you. And like, it was stressing yeah. out so much. But yeah, so he's got his hand, his hand print on the tree skirt. I got mine. And in the middle, I got my baby. Like she was like six months old. So I got like her little tiny hands here. And I have like my, mm. my oldest, she was two and a half. So I don't want it. So right here, somewhere around, oh, right here. And then what I did is that after that, every year, every Christmas, the girls, did their handprints so we can see their hands growing that is so beautiful are they labeled or you just know the smaller to the bigger uh, and I the years how do you know oh you do okay good oh, yeah, yeah i, I would forget name. the years i'd be like wait a sec oh. yeah, yeah oh yeah for sure so that's what i that's what i did and um 
this year, actually, I'm not putting it under the tree. I will have the handprints, but there's a part of me that's kind of like letting go of the past a little bit. Um, and it's, it's a pretty tree skirt, but I find with the hands, I'm like, eh, it doesn't fit the style I'm looking for my house. Like I'm, yeah. <laughs> I got some, some things that I like like that. And so I got a nice white one now, but this, like, it's still just for the, um, just for the memory of like still seeing my kids grow. And, but that was Aww. one thing that was super special to me that, that he, that I asked him to do for us. And like, we always, every year we have it. Like, so like, that was my something special. One other thing that, <clears throat> Well, and that one's just started this year. I guess I want to share these things because, you know, life coaching, I can share about like love attraction and mindset, but also there is life, right? Life happens. And sometimes we don't know what to do. We don't know how we can make moments um, a good way. And I found this poem. And let me read it. It's like, a, it's a, not a poem, but it's kind of a, um, a what? It's, um, it's kind of a prayer. It's called Christmas in heaven. What do they do? They come down to earth to spend time with you. So save them a seat, just one empty chair. You may not see them, but they will be there. And for so cry. many years, it's, so I know, beautiful. I was looking at it this morning and I saw other prayers. I'm like, all like just before. Okay, I'm uh. this but as so I found this year chair, I wanted to do this for so long. At first I wanted to have like a bigger chair that we could sit on and just leave in the living room. But I found this one, which is perfect size. And my plan is to have like maybe a little piece of board <laughs> write a poem on it. Because my mom passed away. My husband passed away. I have an uncle and an aunt and you no know, grandpa. And that would be too many chairs. The little ones I mean, are fine. Yes. They don't need much space. Exactly. They just get so that, that's just like for me, it was like, oh, a little something to remind them, to remember, to remember them. And this year, when I got all my Christmas decoration out, I cried. Like, I don't cry often, but it was very sentimental. It was very, that's why I bring them also earlier. It helps in my healing. It helps. Oh, yeah, I do. I did love them, right? For a long time, like, did I really love them? Like, a part of my brain kind of cut off all the love I had for the people that passed away. I'm like, oh, well, this, this, this was toxic, but I could not, like, I could not see. So I had to kind of transfer and trans transpose all the good things i'm like okay yeah that was good you know oh i do miss that right so mm -hmm. it's been it's been an emotional week putting all those christmas decoration and like remembering the good stuff is also good mm -hmm. and there's one thing one last thing that for me that that was um it's very special for me and i'm like the girls please do not touch it's this christmas ornament here oh this one i made myself actually this one is as two ornaments in it. The first one was my husband, like we were doing some, I learned to do, to do some etching on glass. And my husband uh, for Christmas before he was sick, um, he had made one with my daughter's first, like when she was like not even one year old, she was mm -hmm. 10 months old and he had put her, her footprint and like said Merry Christmas or like his, her name. And so he etched that on, on the Christmas ornament. And I had done one with her fingerprint, like with her handprint. And then when I moved from Ontario to Quebec and the whole thing that I moved, one box got squished. And actually it's not the whole box that got squished. It's like the corner of the box. Uh -huh. that got squished. And one thing broke. It was the ornament my husband made. Nothing else in my move broke except that one ornament. And I cried like this. I don't know. Like this was so emotional. Like I can lose whatever this one. My husband was not a romantic. He was not doing stuff like that, but he, that one broke. And it was, I, I blame my in-laws because they're the one who helped me move. And like, he put the big box heavy on top of that one. And, but now I'm like, I know it was meant to break. It was meant as a trigger to say, okay, let so, it go, release it. Oh, so what I did, I'm like, okay, what do I do with that? Like, that was also my baby's first and print, like footprint. And I was so much, like so much was just like shattering. Like my life was shattering. That was kind of the mirror of my life being shattered, right? And so I kept all the pieces on the side of the window. Now that was in August. Now it's December, doing the Christmas tree. I'm like, hey girls, don't touch anything. Like just the, the fun one. And my, my oldest, she was, she was almost three. And she grabs one and I go in the kitchen. I hear, Psh. I'm like, wait, what? I turn oh around. God. It was the one with her hand print that I made. Oh. I yelled, I bawled. I'm like, no. And then I'm like, no. And I was crying so much. I felt guilty because I'm here. I'm yelling at a two year old. And then I'm like, okay, come down, come down. And I held my daughter so much. And I said, 
you're still there, right? This was just your handprint. You're still there and you're okay. And that was just to remind me that this is just material. And the most important, she was still there. So yeah. what I did later was taking those two ornaments. Mm-hmm. Right? I took the broken pieces. I broke them in, into smaller pieces and I put them in. Oh, look. So yeah, so this ornament actually... I used this as my logo before I became even a life coach, before I was a speaker. I was like just thinking about, oh, I want to be a life coach. And what I actually did was starting, it was called Osticular, which like, they're your colors. That was my, I was not Mary of Mongrain life coach. I was a speaker. And this ball actually is my, was my logo at first. So I had this ball and Aww. it represented to me the grief, right? The grief journey is like a ball with like just mixed up everywhere. So for me, this was like in my logo and I had a black line coming in on one side, which was like all the negative stuff that we have. And on the other side was my color, like pur- uh, purple and turquoise, because those are my two favorite colors that was coming out like a rainbow on the other side. So things came in and I worked through it in my head grief, and it came in out the other side. So this actually is what started me as a life coach and, and like in, in helping people. I'm like, this is what I'm doing. I'm transmuting energy. And now like looking at him, like, oh my God, that's, that's so cool. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. What a great story. Thank you for sharing. So now you have, let me see the ornament in your hand right now. Let me see that one. That's the, uh, is that, was that the exact ornament that broke too? Do you have, did you have like extras? Oh, that's just I, had extra, I had extra, uh, I got some extra glass or yeah, whatever yeah, you the call glass it. One, and then it just opened the top and then just put it in. And I put some, it's like floor wax or something. I, I look online how I can make things glue. So if you want, you can make those with that or like even with um, glitter. If you put wax. Yeah, that's so pretty. It's like a message in a bottle, but it means so much. It's, yeah. And I did one also with my girls, like the little bracelet I got at the hospital. I put one in it. Mm-hmm. And so I put a little ribbon and now it's in my tray as well. So this is how I make things like super, super like cute and just memories. Because for me, there's a big, big things. I don't care because they take too much space, but little, little things like that. Oh, they just melt my heart. And every year it's like, oh, oh yes, I remember. And it's just a nice way. That's why I like Christmas. Yes, there's some sadness, but there's so much joy. Yeah. Any and good to be memory, thankful right? for, and for the children, especially, right? Remember yeah. how magical it was for uh, the holidays and just to wake up and like, wow. And go ahead. Oh, good. That's okay. Yeah, it is so magical. And then the elf on the shelves are coming soon. And are you, are your kids there? They can't hear anyway. It's only in my ears. Anyway. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, I can't find my two elves on the shelves this year. I emptied all my box. Like before I brought the box upstairs, the box upstairs, I'm like opening like, okay, they can open that one. And I don't know where they are. Oh my goodness. Well, wait, can you buy the same ones? Are they all like the same? They you also buy different bit, clothes. Yeah. But that's okay. Okay. <laughs> I just find a note from Santa saying, well, uh, we don't know, like they, they got sick this year or something. <laughs> I'll show you a picture of my husband. And like, that was my, sure. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, beautiful. What, what's his name? Eric. Eric. Oh, look at the baby. He looks so small. <laughs> oh my God. And I've used a lot of black humor. Is it black humor? Dark humor, dark humor in my grief. And that's why on TikTok, there's a lot of dark humor stuff too. Like, well, Lot. And what this picture, I think I told you last week, but this it's this picture that I recreated on TikTok for Halloween last year. But like instead of having him holding my daughter, it was a broom with the, the white sheet. <laughs> but it was that exact picture. We wore the same clothes or very close to oh, that. Oh, that's so sweet. That is so sweet. <laughs> Out. Thank you. No potato chips. Um, two boys. I think girls are easier, they say. That's um, a belief. I believe my girls are awesome. If you believe your kids are awesome, let me tell you that here. Oh, let's see what's going on in your vibration here. Ooh, ooh. Are you ready for that? So I'm ready. Infection. Ear infection. Let's see. The yes, e- ear infection. My goodness. This is my Bible. I'm like, oh, you got this? Well, let me read that to you. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that, this is one of the fun things I do. All right. Let's see. Ear. You no. Know, Okay, so ear problem, acoustic. Let's go see acoustic in the room. I don't know. We'll just go see that. It doesn't say ear infection, but acoustic in. Yeah. Uh, Got to remember my alphabet. (laughs) 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 Uh, This 
this week I, I did just yesterday I did a few videos on um on TikTok about you know what we started at the beginning like the yeah. attraction point I did I asked you a couple questions we never finished it well we'll have to finish it at one point for sure <laughs> but I did it all the questions so if people want to do that the exercise uh go on TikTok Mary Mongrain 90 and you can answer all the question about uh your past and what was the worst and the hardest part of the of of your life and how it made you feel and then we can work from there yeah oh, i don't see it oh man okay invasive family members have challenged your right to have privacy since childhood it okay. can be difficult to discern appropriate boundaries and interactions a controlling parent influential authority figure twisted your truth the parent guardian didn't respect your emotions mm -hmm. privacy or feelings and you lack sufficient support and respect from family members You are made to feel ashamed for expressing boundaries. Deep down, you are painfully shy and are very conscious of how the world perceives you. Letting people into your life can be experienced as an invasion, so isolation feels comforting and peaceful. Expressing the truth is often challenging. In the past, your truth was often twisted into information that was considered unimportant. Now you doubt your own judgment and the power to make decisions. Your parents communicate in such a way that was not entirely clear leaving you confused about expectations. A misunderstanding often led to resistance and rebellion on your part. By suppressing your emotions, you were able to avoid punishment. It was your saving grace. The, there's a couple more things that in there, but we can say that just like, if you for like, an, not, no judgment here, if you force them to come and say hi, you're kind of like, you, you're, yeah. you're, Going over their boundaries, right? If they, for them, it's well, not then he came back. So that was awesome. Yes. Austin came. He was like, yeah, I'm going to say hi, which is cute. But that was on him, right? If you yes. force them, you're going over their boundaries. Mm -hmm. So if you know he's shy, don't force, right? Like we don't yeah. force. So I think that, well, I know it's not the same child as the ear infection. No, that's okay. But, say, it's, but it's the same, right? Even for us, that's something that has happened. Like our parents, like go kiss grandma, right? Like just, and you're like, no yeah you don't want to and it's like the, i remember that my mom forced me to do things you're right what if you just let it be okay I, like is that real love that i have for that person now like am i an adult am i really like, liking them or just because i was forced to like them right mm -hmm. that's something that we can always look at and that's why i love this i'm like oh i got a sore throat or i got this oh my kids got this oh i did not want to go to work today actually right mm -hmm. like i like to see how the universe brought this um for me because You being at home today is the universe answering a prayer for you somehow. I also worked in New York City this morning. I've been up since 1.30 this morning and I worked at the television station. Then I came to the, the, the home studio. So I, this is, yeah, I'm like, shh, thank goodness I'm here though. It's better to work from home, I think, but not every day I get to do this. <laughs> So today is a blessing. It is. It is. I'm very thankful. Yes. And I'm thankful and I'm talking to you. And, oh, thank you so much. Like sometimes I'm like, I don't believe people when they say that. I have to start believing. I'm like, okay, you, Marie, you got something that people like. So just, just enjoy exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. so I'm the blessing sometimes. Like it's sometimes it's hard to believe that when you, uh -huh. when you felt like a burden for so long, mm -hmm. but even I'm the blessing. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, but yeah. So, but I do see all like if my kids get sick, I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't want to stay home today. I, mm -hmm. I, I could not choose to keep them at home. I did not choose to stay to bring them out of school or daycare because so someday I will take them out. Oh, oh, in the morning, in the during the night, they're gonna cough. Like, yeah, I'm gonna keep you home because I know that at one point, like if you go back to school, either you'll they'll ship you yeah. back home, right? Uh -huh. so I, I prefer yeah. that I choose to keep you home. Then having a calls and coming pick her up because then it's gonna be bigger and bigger because then the child the child the children they know right they they know if they're gonna if they get sick you know they're gonna stay home but sometimes people are gonna ship them anyway to school just because they don't have any other choice yeah exactly that's just a mindset right that's, we have a mindset there but just before I think we don't have that many time that much time left today was not about like too much about love attraction but love attraction is what I said today actually might be more what people need needed today to hear more about, you know, how to manifest things, right? It's how can I make my life right now a good life? Yeah. Because It's, yeah, we want to manifest things, but now for me, my journey is like, I'm wanting to love what I have and I'm, I'm tired of wanting to manifest something else because I'm like, I am happy with where I am. Uh, yeah, I know things are, are coming and there's going to be better things, Yeah. But I know, like, I'm like, I'm tired of wanting to have a boyfriend. I'm tired of wanting to Me move too. <laughs> I'm, just, 
I know I'm going to move. I, I know I want to move at one point. Like it's going to be something. It's a desire mm-hmm. I want. Yeah. But I'm just tired of wanting something else and what I have right now. And so I think today, that's why I talked about these things because like what we have right now is amazing. How can we make the most out of it? Because living in the new paradigm in the end is just to be happy. Doesn't matter like if we have what we want or not because we're happy. We choose to be happy no matter what's going on in our reality. And, and that's actually when your reality is supposed to catch up with, you know, oh, well, she's happy now. Well, let's just bring her whatever she wanted anyway. Yeah. And you're like, oh, good, I have it. I knew I was going to get it anyway at one point. Um, I'm not overly excited because yeah. I saw it coming, right? <laughs> I created it. <laughs> and also you taught us that everything happens for a reason today. Look, when that ornament broke out of all the ornaments. Oh, so oh yeah, but, I know. <laughs> and then the other ornament, but your daughter was okay. So it's kind of like, the man upstairs has a plan. The universe has a plan. Whatever you believe in, it's just meant to be and we'll get through it. But, you know, we get tested at times, of course. And now in hindsight, you're like, it's really not that big of a deal. Look, I was able to make such good out of it, right? But that takes a mindset because people could have been crying and like being on it for like two, three, four years and for the rest of their life, right? Mm-hmm. I chose, to say, okay, let's do something out of it. Because And even like, like my husband is dead. I choose to do something good with what and I was dealt with yeah. mm-hmm. but it's a choice I could just complain all the time or I could just say you know what this is what happened how can I use this and make it something good yeah absolutely and at times it's not going to be easy as you know and a lot of us go through these types of things so you as a coach um clearly you work with people dealing with grief all the time I'm sure right I love yes clearly you must I mean you can empathize clearly losing someone you love how hard that is so someone out there is listening today uh what other types of people are you looking to work with anyone in particular um right now I guess I'm like, I don't have a niche, but I guess my niche is grief because that's yeah. where grief is so empowering because um, abusive, not abusive relationship, but when you have you no, know, like feeling unworthy yourself, like low self-esteem um, because, you know, you, you just break up from a relationship. You're grieving there too. Like you're grieving what could have been. You're grieving what was. And then you're starting to see the truth of what actually happened in your life. And you're like, oh my God, I let that happen. Yeah. And then start taking back our power to actually attract something better. So mm-hmm. I, I'm going into kind of my goal is in the end going to like love coaching, like but love like self-love coaching. That's what I'm doing right now. But that's <laughs> where I'm like going for. <laughs> oh, good. Well, it's a pleasure having you here. And if we want to reach out to you, tell us the best form in all forms. Yes, uh, we have Instagram at Mary Mongrain90, TikTok Mary Mongrain90 as well, and my website on Friday this week afternoon uh, will be Mary of Mongrain and Mary, Mary of Mongrain.com. Oh, perfect. Well, it's a pleasure having you here. Thank you for sharing your stories, your journey. By the way, what time do the kids get home? Uh, my youngest is at four, so around four thirty. We're both we're all at home. And then, what do you do at nights? Just curious. How does your oh. We, uh, so, so a little bit at the beginning, we do our homework, the, my girl's homework and my other daughter, she's like, oh, I want to do homework too. So she does her book and I have fun with that. Then I cook dinner while they watch some comics, the tablet, tablet yeah. is amazing. Um, and then sometimes we watch more tablet in the, in the evening. Do they do or sports that- or any activities, dance, no, nothing. nothing. So, okay. So you're not gym Saturday morning. And even last Good. week, you're like, I don't want to go. I'm like, Good. Oh, okay. Good. Aww. Just chill at home and just take it slow. We, we, we bathe, like I bathe them maybe two or three times a week, but like not more because they're, they're kids, they're clean, like they're fine. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much. A pleasure having you here. Always love speaking with you. Have a great day. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your night with your family and we'll talk next week, okay? Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. 
We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.